Okay, so uh, I'm actually making a little bit of progress here on this Outlaw 525, and uh, today we'll be going ahead and add the uh, steering stabilizer that I picked up off of eBay. Uh, a lot of people that ride ATVs, they're like, um, that this is not a necessity, which it's not. Uh, they're a great aftermarket piece, and the only reason I picked this up was I only paid like $55 used for these. Uh, all my street bikes that I usually own, I end up putting one of these on on a street bike because for one reason, one reason only, on the street bikes, the high-powered street bikes, 1,000 cc or larger, uh, they work. So I've never really ran one of these on an ATV, and I'll tell you why, because when I was riding ATVs, I didn't have any money. Um, but, you know, things kind of change over time, so I've kind of... You know, I want to give these a shot, and if you're riding, even if you're riding woods, like what I'm building this four-wheeler for, this thing will help out in the woods. Uh, just the just the the theory behind it uh, will make it worth the money. So uh, I don't have any install instructions, but I did find one picture on the internet. I can only find one for the Polaris model, and we'll go ahead and get this hooked up, and then I'll tell you once I get this thing running if this thing works or not. So based upon the pictures that I saw on the internet, it looks like it will bolt onto the left side of the frame here and then it, it will connect to the steering stem post. And I just mocked up the plastic here because I got a long way to go on this ATV before I get it back uh, back running. And it was right underneath of this this front cover, so that's that's where I'm gonna put it. And you know, we'll just see how this goes here without instructions. It's pretty simple, though. Uh, there's only a couple bolts. So, shouldn't take too long. This ought to be a pretty quick video. Um, yeah, real tired. Just drank coffee at 6 o'clock in the afternoon. I just, I, I'm not really feeling it today. So, on the stabilizer here, you have two parts. This is going to go to your, your steering stem. And we'll tighten that up. And then this part will bolt onto the frame. And this one is a billet uh, tanium stabilizer, and I think it's got seven-way settings. It, this one's got a lot of use to it, you can tell, but it's still it's still functional, which these are rebuildable. So we will uh, we'll see because that first setting that first setting is pretty stiff. But man, you crank it all the way out, and it's hard to to move. So, okay. And from what I saw, was this piece was hooked to the frame here, and I really don't want to run it on the outside. So we need to run it through the inside, and I might have to loosen a few pieces here. What you want to do when you do this is make sure that your, your your tires are straight, your handlebars are straight where they need to be. So I just loosened the nut there and then we'll get this hooked up. You want to make sure it's going to clear everything because the rectifier is on the bottom there. And I'm not so sure that this is even going to work. Might have to move the camera. There we go. Have to get some smaller tools. is we'll just get it up about as high as possible and make sure it's not going to interfere with anything and then we'll get this other plate put on here
don't tighten everything up. We'll just uh, get everything just snug first. And we'll come back and tighten everything up once we get everything lined up. Inside here and tighten these up. Okay. Now upon the installation of this, and this might be difficult to do on this lift because I don't have a lot of room, is you're going to have to have enough stroke of the, well essentially the, the piston in there to move left and right. So you're going to move this thing all the way to the right and make sure that that piston isn't bottoming out and then you're going to want to move it back to the left okay and make sure that it's not hitting when the piston uh, goes all the way outside and I got to check that we might have to move it Okay, so tighten it up, see what it does. Oh no, loosen it up. Okay, so we got problems. I didn't tighten it all the way to the steering stem shaft. Okay, and then we're just going to uh, remove this plastic here and then uh, retighten all the bolts after you get it all situated to where the rod uh, is going to be able to move forward and back without bottoming out. Kind of want to be careful uh, when you're messing with these because we are dealing with aluminum. Okay, and that's uh, that's how it's installed there, underneath. And I actually had to lower it a little bit to get it to clear the rectifier and the rod. 
as you can see, it bottoms out and there's still space left on it. Okay, so that's pretty much it on these. Highly recommend them. Uh, if you're uh, just checking it out for the stabilizer video, look through my other videos. I'm rebuilding this whole KTM 525 Outlaw, uh, Polaris Outlaw KTM 525. It's been a heck of a day. Um, and I've got a lot of work left to do on this thing. So um, we're, we're, we're steadily making it. But I went ahead and I didn't know if you've seen, I put the A-arm uh, A -arm protectors on as well. And those were, man, I picked those up for uh, $27 on eBay on sale. And brand new in the box, Polaris OEM parts. So uh, the, the good thing about this quad is everything I'm finding, I can find performance parts. I can find stuff brand new in the box at dealerships that's left over, reasonably priced. The only thing that's a little iffy is, re is if there's any major mechanical repairs on these KTM engines. So like I stated before, there's going to be a clutch video coming up. Totally lost the clutch on this. But uh, thanks for watching. Check out the other videos. And I'm still going to start getting new links below.